On his free throw game, we're going to go to Kyrie Irving now. We have his sound in. Let's hear what Kyrie had to say about tonight's loss. Kyrie, these last couple of games with uh, you guys struggling defensively, obviously, you know, Kevin is one of the best you know, scorers of all time, but he also does a lot for you guys defensively. Do you feel the impact that he's had on that end this season is, you know, somewhat overlooked? Yo, you say overlooked? Yeah. Uh, we appreciate him. Um, I don't know. About you guys just, you know, in general. What do you mean, like public? Yeah. Or, uh... I'm not sure. I, I I know how we feel about him here and, and uh, what he brings on the defensive end. I, like I said it a few games ago, he covers up a lot of our mistakes, uh, being able to switch out on the perimeter, uh, being able to get rebounds, and that's where we've been struggling is just staying in front of our men sometimes and then fouling. Uh, they're not just our rim protection. They could only do but so much. Uh, you know, having another seven-footer along him makes a difference, but uh, a long, uh, long defender next to him makes a difference. But um, you know, we just got to figure out how to slide our puppies a little bit better and stay in front of people and stop fouling so often and giving these teams easy free throws um, where we, if we pull them in the half court, it will be a little bit more difficult. Kyrie, what can you guys do with some of these more physical teams that tend to hit you guys first and get you guys kind of – it seems like sometimes when teams are playing physical, you guys are on the defensive instead of being on the offensive. Do you, do you, A, do you agree with that? And B, is there something you guys can do to combat that? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't fully agree with that, but I mean, it's basketball, so it's going to be physical regardless. But I, I feel what you're saying in terms of watching, uh, excuse me, from the sideline of of what it can feel like as you know, as an audience member, it, it will get physical, and and I do feel like we're we are defending and we are reacting. But uh, when we start with the game aggressive and we're getting easy shots, um, and we can flow, you know, just flow with the game. Uh, you guys saw that first uh, shot clock violation that we could have potentially had and it ends up turning to three free throws. And it's just, you know, little plays like that where we're usually on the, um, you know, the positive side where we're going the other way and we get our offense going. Um, so just, just too many details that we missed tonight on the defensive end and just staying in front of our guys. But that's been the tail of the tape. And, um, you know, I think it, it gives us a chance to see where we can get better continuously. Edmund said in the locker room that you were kind of staying on him to be aggressive all night, and obviously that's reflected in the box score with the night he had. Just for a guy whose minutes aren't consistent but is still ready for it whenever his number is called, what have you seen from him this year? Yeah, I think he has a willingness to learn. Uh, obviously with him getting injured last year, uh, you know, unfortunately he had to take a year off, and uh, he's just getting his legs underneath him. And I know exactly what that feels like to come back from an injury and want to press every day, and you want to make it back up. All the lost time is what I'm saying. You know, you want to make it back up, but uh, just got to take baby steps. And he's on one of the greatest teams in the world. And, you know, I tell him, uh, I was telling him in the locker room today, you know, I've, I've been mentored and disciplined by the best of the best. So if you have questions, uh, you know, let's share it. And on the court, I just want to see him do well. I'm um, just like the rest of my teammates. So uh, that positive reinforcement, that positive affirmation goes a long way. And I just try to give it to him. Hey, Kyrie. Eight All-Stars now for you. Um, how does this one feel? I mean, I know it, it's not a surprise. Uh, I mean, you've been way up in the votes for a while, but still just now that it's official, you're a starter. Um, just what is your reaction to that? Uh, more than grateful. Uh, and I don't take any of these accomplishments for granted. It is my eighth one. Um, you know, hopefully be hitting double digits soon, uh, just keeping a high level of play. But I'm just grateful for the people at home. I would not be here without y'all. Y'all voted me in. I'm ready to give a show. Um, and uh, it just shows the community power uh, of just what I've been able to build over time. Um, you know, international community voting. Um, obviously, this community here in America, but... Um, feel like I've put in enough work to be deserving this year. Um, and I think I just want to let that continue to speak for itself. Just let my work speak for itself. Kyrie, you guys have done such a good job recently fighting through whatever adversity has come your way. Now you lose Ben, you lose TJ, you're not sure how long they may be out. How do you, as the leader of the group now, make sure that everybody stays up instead of kind of sliding, uh, given the circumstances? Yeah, well, I can't control everyone's emotions day to day. Um, as much as a, as I see myself as one of the leaders are, of our team, um, but what I can show is just a consistency to continue to work on my off days and after the games and before the games and just continue to prepare uh, at a very high level. Um, whoever is available for us to play will be available and um, just move on to the next game. 
Um, as much as I would love to sit up here and give you guys a, a nice diatribe of what it looked like in the future, I, I just don't know. You know, TJ being out and Ben being out. Uh, so we just got to take it one day at a time and just want those guys to get healthy. And that's the most important thing. Um, we just got to carry, carry our own water right now. Chop wood, carry water. Uh, I was just uh, back to the all-star thing. Jacques had mentioned that he kind of, after talking about the loss, he also took a moment to celebrate for you and KD in the locker room. What, what did he say and what was that, you know, what was that like? Uh, I mean, he, he always does a great job of balancing it out, of holding us accountable after we win or lose. Um, and then always ending it with a message of some joy and some happiness of, of just putting in perspective of, uh, you know, what this game means to us as competitors, but what it means to us as men off the floor for our families and what we represent. So I'm appreciative of his messaging and, and how he gets it across. Um, but he just congratulated us for making All-Star and not taking it for granted and uh, also understanding that this group helped us get to our All-Star um, status this year. You know, we went unbelievable in, in December, and we couldn't have done it without our teammates. So I'm just grateful for those guys in the locker room. They, they continue to push me and um, continue to motivate me to want to be at the level I'm at now, skill-wise, and just continue to work. So I'm grateful for it. Back in the third, sorry, you went to halftime ahead and came back in the third quarter. Did you feel more like pressure in that third quarter when they had the ten point lead? Nah, no pressure out on the on the basketball court as much as I would like to believe that. Um, but you know, they came out very, very aggressive, and um, you know, you, when you're going against teams in this league that have a um, what do they say they. They, they have a tendency to come out in the third quarter and try to win that. And uh, tonight, I just think we were unprepared. We came out, and we were just flat. And when you do that and you're reacting to everything, every possession, then it makes it difficult. So they had a rhythm, and once Jock called that timeout, I knew we were in for a game. Uh, Sadiq Bey, I don't know how much he had in that third quarter, uh, but he played extremely well. He's gotten extremely better. Um, proud of him. And uh, just a collection of guys out over there. Um, you know, that Detroit team, as much as... Uh, their record shows for it. I just know they're going to come in, compete, and be physical. So we just caught flat-footed in the third quarter, and that led to the rhythm in the fourth. So we got to be better moving forward, and we will, uh, no matter who's in the lineup. Frank, Nets lose the game tonight, but as we just heard, uh, as a reminder, two Brooklyn Nets are headed to the All-Star game as starters, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving for the eighth time. Yeah, and remember now, the fans vote for 50, uh, the fan vote counts for 50%, and Kyrie and Donovan Mitchell of the Cleveland Cavaliers won the fan boat by a landslide. And then, of course, the media counts for 25%. The players count for 25%. One thing about the player vote, always keep this in mind. And I saw a tweet tonight from Tim Reynolds of the Associated Press down in Miami. Chet Holmgren, who hasn't played one second of an NBA game, got four votes. So a lot, not all the time the players take it too seriously. Right. But Kyrie's obviously a very popular player in the U.S., around the world, got a lot of votes. It'll be a lot of fun because who knows if he's going to be on the same team as Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant is not picking the team. It's going to be Giannis and LeBron James. He could end up playing with LeBron again. Of course, they won a championship together in Cleveland. I thought about this, too. It's interesting, and I, but, and I don't mean to pile on anybody here, but this, this is on a night like today or a night like tonight, they announced that Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are in the All-Star game. Ben Simmons has been in the All-Star game. Think about how far away he seems like he is from that right now. And everyone, and no one wants to, no one takes a perverse joy in Ben Simmons not being a good player. I think people, you know, the, everyone knows that he has the skill. They just want to see it come to fruition and really get back to being the player that he was during that 12-game winning streak that the Brooklyn Nets had. More than anybody, I think he wants Kevin Durant back. Jock Vaughn first. Ben Simmons second. Yeah, everything was clicking on all cylinders yeah. with Kevin Durant. In